Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Let's go over the 10 game MLB DFS slate for today on DraftKings. But before we continue, as always, if you guys could just leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, you might as well hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be here all season long trying to help you guys become better MLB DFS players, and I cover other sports as well. So if you're going to keep coming back to the channel each and every single day, or each and every single week, you might as well hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post new content. And if you want to follow me over on Twitter, I'm at ChrisPennell16. I'm at CPen16 over on IG. And if you want to support my content over on Patreon, always much appreciated. We've got 300 plus people in there. You can join the community, hop into the Discord chat, chat it up with me all day if you want. And then you just get access to all the extra content that I put out every single day or every single week, depending on the sport. So if you're interested, links in the description below. If you're not, that's fine. Let's just dive into today's slate. So. Really looking forward to the pitching on this slate because there's a plenty of elite options here. You have three aces in Shane Bieber, Garrett Cole, and Lucas Giolito. Then you have a fine mid-range pitcher with upside in Chris Paddock who draws a very favorable matchup here versus the Seattle Mariners. Now, I would say Lucas Giolito is a tier below guys like Shane Bieber and Garrett Cole, but he's certainly got upside. He's coming off in an absolutely dominant outing versus the Tigers. So really looking forward to the pitching. I think you can double spend up today, but if you want the cheaper option, I don't mind Paddock paired up with one of these aces because I think you're going to have to play at least one of these guys for the most part but we'll start up top with Shane Bieber 10,800 I know I'm a big Indians fan so I could always sound biased here but I think he's the best option on the slate him or Garrett Cole they're like 1A and 1B for the most part but I'll give the edge to Shane Bieber because he's just been so good this season that Garrett Cole's been fine too but he's not had these ceiling games that Shane Bieber has had and Shane Bieber's pretty much doing it each and every single start, if you're looking at his game log, 41 points, 46 points, 29, 19 was his worst game. 19 being your worst game is pretty darn good. Then 39, and then 35. And that 46-point outing was versus the same exact Twins team. So I think there's plenty of upside here. I don't love picking on the Twins, but I also don't love picking on Shane Bieber either. So you got to look at it both ways. And I think Shane Bieber should be able to continue his run of excellence. I mean, he's a Cy Young candidate. I think most likely he will win the Cy Young in the AL. He's just been that good so far this season. We don't have to worry about a pitch count issue with him. I mean, he's seen 97, 102, 106, 101, 98, 99. I mean, he should crack 100 pitches pretty much for the most part here. And the matchup versus the Twins, it's not going to look great. But he did just strike out 13 of these guys. But they're at a 25% K rate on the season, uh, 198 ISO, which, you know, again, guys like Max Kepler and Eddie Rosario could give him some issues, even Nelson Cruz. But... Outside of those guys, I think he's going to be fine here for the most part. And if you're looking at his numbers the past two seasons combined, 32% K rate. Now, that K rate's sitting like a Garrett Cole numbers last season, where I believe it's above 40% right now, if not close to it. And 2.96 XFIP. He's got elite control at 5% walk rate. And just overall, he's been a fantastic pitcher this season. I don't see why that trend can't continue. Vegas agrees as well. Only 3.4 runs against him, 63% chance for the win, and 8 strikeouts as well. So Shane Bieber. I think he makes an excellent option in all formats there. You can make a case for Shane Bieber or Garrett Cole tonight. Either one is fine. You can play both too. There's plenty of value on this slate. So if you want to play both, I don't mind it because they could honestly each get you 30, 40 fantasy points, which if that's what happens and you get, you can just nail that in your lineup, you don't need much from your bats to cash for the most part. I mean, unless they ended up both being chalky, then yeah, you're going to need your bats to have to do something. But they definitely offer you a very high floor and a very high ceiling. So... Uh, speaking of the 1B here, we have Garrett Cole, 10,600. Now, he's been good this season, but he's not had these absolute ceiling games like Shane Bieber. Like, I just read off the game lock for him. Here's Garrett Cole. It's 20, or, sorry, 24, 23, 19, 20, 31, 26. Very good, but not Shane Bieber-like. So I'm going to give the edge to Shane Bieber just because of how on point he's been this season and how sharp he's been. I mean, he's had the best breaking ball in baseball. I mean, he's just been so, so good. But Garrett Cole, obviously a fine option here. Pitch count, again, is not an issue with Cole. He's been over 100 pitches three times. And the one his first start was his first start. So, again, not everyone was stretched out. But he also got rain delayed there. So, ended this outing anyway. But outside of that, he's been above 90 pitches. And the strikeouts have been there. They are a little bit down this season. Because I know before the season started, his strikeout rate was at 40%. Now it's at 39%. But, you know, big deal. I mean, that's not too much of a concern there. And you got to like Garrett Cole. Vegas does it well as well. They have eight and a half strikeouts, and now there's no implied team total yet for the Braves, but I'd have to imagine it's going to be one of the lowest on the entire slate. Now, I don't love picking on the Braves. They still got some good bats, even though that Acuna and Albies is out of the lineup, like Freddie Freeman and some others, but 
even then, when you take those guys out of the lineup, it's going to water it down a little bit. But I love, I like Eric Cole here. I mean, the Braves, if you're looking at their numbers this season, they're striking out over a 26% clip overall. And to righties, they're at 25.6%. They've had some power, 206 ISO, 278 batting average, and a 121 WRC+. Plus. So I wouldn't say it's a walk in the park here for Garrett Cole, but it's also not going to be a walk in the park for the Braves. Same reasons, as I said, for the Twins. So even though the matchups aren't great for these two pitchers, they're still some of the best pitchers in baseball. So they should be fine here. They, should, they can overpower any single lineup. And then if you don't want to spend up for these two guys, or if you want to spend up for one of them and pair him with Lucas Giolito as your SP2 if you want to spend up a bit, I have no issues with that either. He's coming off an absolutely dominant outing versus the Detroit Tigers. Now, to be fair, pretty much everyone has dominant outings versus the Detroit Tigers because uh, they've been so bad versus righties this season. But he struck out 13 on 110 pitches and scored 43.4 fantasy points, which was by far his best game of the season. But before that, 7 versus St. Louis isn't great, but then 24, 27, 21, the negative 5 in his first outing of the year. So we'll write that one off, but outside of that, he's been fine for the most part. And This matchup versus the Pirates is just absolutely fantastic. Like, look, going against Detroit as a righty is obviously amazing, but going against Pirates is almost just as good. They're not striking out as much, but there's just no power there whatsoever. If you just look at the numbers, 24% carry to righties, only a 6% walk rate, 116 ISO, 210 batting average, 256 will open a 60 WRC plus. These numbers are pretty horrendous. So I think Lucas Giolito is a fine option. He's a 32% K rate, 3.62 XFIP. Walks can be a little bit of an issue, but he limits the hard contact, and I think he's a fine option here. There's just really no power in this lineup whatsoever. Vegas likes him too. He's a heavy favorite, 67% chance for the win, seven strikeouts, 3.6 runs against him, and I just think he's a fine option here at a bit of a discount from the top end pitchers. And then if you want to go with a mid-range SP2 today, I wouldn't blame you for that either. Just spend up for a couple of more bats. But we have Chris Paddock here at 7,800. He draws a very nice matchup versus the Seattle Mariners, and Vegas likes him here as well. 3.43 runs against him, 63% chance for the win, and 5.5 and strikeouts. Now, if you're looking at his game log this season, he hasn't like really blown you away, but he doesn't really kill you either. Now, he's had one bad start this year. That was versus the Dodgers, which... Pretty much everyone gets a free pass versus the Dodgers. So outside of that, he's been at 17, 14, 18, 15, and 22. So you can pretty much pencil him in for 15 to 20 points. I think that's fair enough for him. And the matchup versus Seattle is pretty darn good if you're looking at their splits versus righties this year. 22% carry. It's not amazing, but only a 151 ISO, 237 batting average, and just overall some pretty weak numbers here. There's a couple of lefties that could give him some issues here, but I really don't see a reason to want to fade Chris Paddock. Now, I don't think he's an absolute, absolute must because you can double spend it for pitcher day. I don't think that's out of the equation, but I think Paddock checks in as the best mid-range SP2 option on this slate. So, like Chris Paddock, and then we'll move on to the bats now at this point. We'll start with catcher. We have James McCann at 4,200, and I pretty much like all the White Sox today. All these righties profile out very well versus Stephen Broll, and there's plenty of righties in this mass, in this, on this White Sox team that carry quite a bit of power versus left-handed pitching, and James McCann is certainly one of those guys. We just take a look at his splits last season versus lefties. He had a 200 ISO, 132 WRC+, plus, and a 300 batting average. And Stephen Brolt, pretty tough on the lefties. 135 ISO and a 27% carry, but to the righties, 351 Wobo, 184 ISO and a 17% carry with a double-digit walk rate. So I feel like you can just load up on these White Sox righties, and Vegas would agree. 5.36 runs in Vegas, and which I believe right now is the highest on the entire slate. Now, the Cubs aren't out yet, so maybe they could contend for the highest, but I still think the White Sox will probably own the top spot on the board today. The Dodgers might creep up there, so we'll see, but definitely like the White Sox here. Then Stephen Vogt, 3,800, so... Not in lo- as much. I'm not in love with the Diamondbacks as much as I was last night because it's a tougher matchup versus Marquez, but you can certainly le- use lefties here versus Marquez. And I know he was in Coors Field, but he's been in, he's been pretty awful the past two starts. I believe he's given up 19 hits the past two starts, and he gave up 10 runs and 10 hits in his last start, which, again, Coors Field, but still, he just got absolutely slaughtered. And we can use the lefties here versus him. Marquez is someone you pretty much fade righties against for the most part. 28% K rate versus them and only a 4% walk rate, but 269 ISO and 20% to the lefties. So lefties are certainly viable here, and Stephen Vogt does have a decent amount of power versus right-handed pitching with a 233 ISO last season. So Vogt's fine. Victor Caratini is probably going to end up being the cash game option if you're spending down. He's dirt cheap at 2600 and 
you're going to have to have some interest here in the Cubs. I mean, Spencer Turnbull had a good start to the season. He did fade a bit, and just overall the Detroit bullpen's not very good. And look, I think Casey Mize is probably better than Spencer Turnbull for the most part. And I know he's a young pitcher, so maybe that wasn't the best thing to say. I mean, Spencer Turnbull's got some more experience, but they got the Casey Mize fairly easily, and I don't think Turnbull's going to have much more success than he did. So I think we can certainly look at the Chicago Cubs once again. Obviously, I have quite a bit of interest in some in the uh, Chicago teams today. So I don't like Caratini. He actually has better splits versus righties as well. And lefties are someone we can use against Spencer Turnbull. Last season versus righties, pretty darn tough with a 26% K rate. But versus lefties, that comes down to 18%, and the global goes up as well. So don't mind the lefties here for the Cubs. Then going down to first base, we have one of the hottest hitters in baseball currently, Jose Abreu, who comes in at a massive price tag of 5000 But I think it's certainly warranted. I think the guy's got, what, six or seven home runs the past four or five games. He has been on absolute fire. I still think he's going to be popular just because of how good he's been. Again, the White Sox are one of the top options on the slate, if not the top one. And he crushes left-handed pitching. He's had 232 ISO versus them, 360 batting average, and just overall very elite numbers. We already talked about it, but Stephen Brault's someone we can use right-handed bats against. So definitely like Jose Abreu here. Same goes for his teammate, Edwin Encarnacion, only 3,800, and should be hitting near the middle of the order. And look. You think Jose Abreu had good numbers versus lefties last season? Well, Edmar Encarnacion had a 349 ISO, 152 WRC plus, and a 594 slugging. Not the, quite the batting average that he had, but I definitely think he's a fine option at only 3,800. It sucks that they played the same position because you're going to have to pick between the two, but if you got the money for Abreu, I say go for it. If you got to spend down, I like Encarnacion at 3,800. And then if you need a punt option here, we have Ryan O'Hearn going against Adam Wainwright. He is someone that will struggle versus left-handed bats. Looking at his numbers, pretty tough on the righties. 127 ISO, 22% K rate, and only a 4% walk rate. But if you look at to the lefties, 216 ISO, 18% K rate, and a 13% walk rate. So definitely prefer the lefties here on the Royals versus Adam Wainwright. But I'm not really looking to stack the Royals or anything. Just mainly using some lefty one-offs for the most part. Then dropping down to second base. So Johnny Cueto is not someone I really want to pick on. He's not been bad this season. He's also coming off a really strong outing where he scored, I believe, 25 fantasy points versus the Angels. But the Dodgers are one of the best teams, if not the best team, versus right-handed pitching. They were last season, and this season they're still hitting them very well. And Muncy's good versus both sides of the plate. Now, you're probably only playing these Dodgers bats in tournaments because if you're spending up a pitcher today, it's going to be hard to fit in guys like Bellinger, Muncy, and Mookie Betts. So really only tournament options here, but... Muncy's fine versus the righty. He's got elite numbers versus them. And then we have two value options. We have Colton Wong at 3,300. As long as he makes the lineup, he did not last night. But as long as he does, I'd have to imagine he's going to be pretty heavy chalk here at only 3,300. Especially when it's Matt Harvey, who is someone that really struggles with left-handed bats. And the Cubs, uh, not the Cubs, the Cardinals actually have a pretty high implied team total at 5.23 right now. Now, Wong's not a big home run guy whatsoever. Only a 144 ISO to righties, but... 15% carries, a high contact hitter with a high batting average, 283 batting average, and a 370 on base percentage. And if you're looking at Harvey splits last year, both sides of the plate are viable here, but versus lefties, a 276 ISO given up and a 14% walk rate, and only a 15% K rate and a 400 Woba. So definitely like Colton Wong here at that 3300 price tag. And then if you want to just go a little bit cheaper, you have Jason Kipnis at 2900 He could make the lineup, he could not. The interchanges sometimes, but... Only 2900 he's a cheap lefty here versus Spencer Turnbull, so he's going to grade out decently well as a value play on today's slate. Then third base is pretty loaded. we got Arenado, Machado, Mankata all going up against lefties. Now Machado and Arenado are some of the best lefty mashers in the entire league. So we're going to start with them. We have Nolan Arenado at 4900 Typically only like playing Arenado in course field for the most part, but I think the Rockies are going to be okay here versus Alex Young in Arizona. I mean, as long as they're going to open up the roof at some point, or even if they don't, doesn't matter. I still think they're fine options here because Alex Young is just not the greatest pitch in the world versus right-handed bats. He gave up a 200 ISO to them last season and just 320 Woba. So you can certainly use some righties here. And Arenado, one of the best lefty hitters in the entire league, 296 ISO last season to them, 611 slugging, 315 batting average, and a low strikeout rate. So Arenado's fine. I think some of these Rockies are definitely viable on this slate, specifically Arenado. And uh, Trevor's story. You could also look at Matt Kemp if you want a cheap righty. And then a couple of other righties make sense, but I didn't list too many of them. Just pretty much, I think, Arenado and Story. Manny Machado, 4,800. Now, Marco Gonzalez has actually been pretty good to start the season, but so have the Padres' offense. And 
I'm going to side with these Padres bats for the most part because they've been pretty solid so far. And if we just want to look how good Machado is versus left-handed pitching, I mean, 370 ISO, 685 slugging, 315 batting average, and a 17% strike. All right, so very similar numbers here to Nolan Arenado, but he did have more power versus them this season. Now, his splits versus righties are worse than Nolan Arenado, but like the matchup here quite a bit. And I'm surprised San Diego's team total is not higher because, look, I know Marco's been fine, but... So the Padres, I mean, they've. Had, I think their team is like over 200 ISO to lefties so far this season. So I see no reason why we can't target some of these Padres bats for sure, specifically Machado and Tatis for the most part. But definitely like Machado here versus the lefty. Now, I will say Marco has been solid this season, so I don't wouldn't say it's a cakewalk, but not a high strikeout guy for the most part. It actually has had some decent strikeout games so far this season with like a couple of nine strikeout games, I believe, but... Still 151 ice going up to righties, only an 18% K rate, high five ball rate. So I, I'll take Machado here versus the lefty. Then Yoan Makanda, 4,700, going up against the lefty. I feel like I said his last name wrong. Weird there. Yoan Mankata. Mankata. <laughs> but anyway, I like the White Sox here. 5.36 implied team total. All the righties here make sense. Now, Mankata is a switch hitter. And he actually is better versus right handed pitching, looking at his splits. But versus lefties last season, still at a 300 batting average. In a 201 ISO, he improved on that from the previous season because I remember he was, I remember he used to be almost hot garbage versus lefties, but definitely improved on that and he's fine versus both sides of the play here. And I like the White Sox, so definitely think he is viable. And Matt Carpenter, 3,600, literally the same reasons as Colton Wong. He's decently cheap and Matt Harvey is certainly hittable, especially from uh, the left handed bats here. Matt Carpenter would qualify there. Now, he does strike out quite a bit, but Matt Harvey's not a big strikeout guy, so I think that suits a guy like Matt Carpenter well. So you can certainly look Carp's way. Now, shortstop's pretty loaded up top. So I feel like I'm going to end up spending up here. But Tatis, he's super expensive. But at 5,600, I think he is certainly viable just because of how good he was versus lefties last season. If just looking at the numbers, he had a 223 WRC+, 542 slugging, 510 well, but 306 ISO, 419 batting average, near 20% walk rate. And he's been amazing so far this season and I don't see why that's not going to continue he's looking like one of the best players in the entire league and I like the Tatis big fan of him he's just electric to watch he's fun to watch and I love his hair too <laughs> it just looks cool so uh, yeah, I yeah, love uh, Tatis's game and he think he's certainly viable here even though he's very very expensive so I'm not sure how easy he's going to be to fit in but if you want to if you want to build around him I wouldn't hate that either just because I mean Tatis has been awesome but I understand the price tag is not the easiest thing to fit in the world so Maybe more of a tournament option, but still fine in all formats for me. Tim Anderson, super expensive, but he's hit, he's been hitting the ball pretty well, and he's usually pretty darn good versus lefties. Last season, he had a 326 batting average versus them, 339 to righties, but still solid numbers versus left-handed pitching, and it doesn't really matter who they throw out there. He's good versus righties as well, and look, I like the White Sox a lot on this slate, especially the righties. And, uh, Trevor Story, so we have four, four 5K guys listed here, so I feel like I'm going to end up spending up for a shortstop, but... We'll see, but as of right now, it's looking like a good spot to spend up on. But Trevor Story, he's crushing he pretty much the same play as the winner now for the most part. You just pretty much... What I usually typically do is play... If I can't play both, I just pick the one that's at a more of a premium position. So shortstop looks kind of loaded on this slate. So I feel like maybe Arenado... I mean, third base is pretty good too. So I just feel like I'd rather play Arenado over Story because I can still play guys like Corey Seager, Tim Anderson, Tatis... Although Machado's there too, so they're kind of it's kind of just whatever you want to pick with, or you don't even have to play it either. It's if you're picking between both, but I feel like I'd start with Arenado over Story because he's just a little bit cheaper. But hey, both are fine options here, and Alex Young is a guy we can certainly use right-handed bats against. And Trevor Story you've got elite numbers versus lefties, I and mean, you can just take a look for yourself. You guys get the idea. Trevor Story versus a lefty is always in play. Corey Seager, he lead, I believe he's one of the top few hitters in the league with a with the barrel rate so far this season, or the most barrels hit, I believe if I remember correctly. But he's been hitting the ball very hard this season. I believe he has over a 50% hard uh, hit rate, which is great. And he's been just really good to start the season. Going to be hitting at the top of the order. 5,100, the Dodgers do make a pretty good stack on this slate, specifically the lefties. And Corey Seager's got great numbers versus righties. And if I'm going to use anybody versus Cueto, it's going to be left-handed bats. So Corey Seager... Certainly makes sense here. He's just super expensive. And I had to throw a cheap option out, out here because I didn't want to just list a bunch of 5K guys because that doesn't really help really anybody. But Adalberto Mondesi at 3,000. Now he's going to be hitting at the bottom of the order. But I like lefties here versus Adam Wainwright. 
And Mondesi does have better splits versus righties with the 184 ISO. The numbers aren't good, but they are better compared to the lefties. He does strike out a lot, though. He doesn't walk very much, but he's got speed. But I don't mind the lefties here versus Wainwright. Like I said, the splits get much worse to lefties. So Mondesi's fine at only 3K. Then dropping down to the outfield of Cody Bellinger, 5,700. He started the season off pretty cold, but... I believe he has four home runs in the past five games, so he's been hitting his stride, and the price came up as well, 5700 But if you're stacking Dodgers, you can't leave out Bellinger, one of their best bats, him and Mookie Betts for the most part, but obviously it's a loaded offense. Uh, Muncie, Betts, Bellinger, Corey Seager, I mean, you can just load up the offense if you want. They're just super expensive, and if you're spending it for pitchers, which you shouldn't cash games, it's not really going to be that easy to fit them in. Eloy Jimenez, 4,900. It seems a bit expensive, so he feels like more of a, just a tournament option for me. But, like, he hits left-handed pitching very well. He hits righties actually even better last season. But you can full stack the White Sox here. Love the righties here versus Stephen Brault. And they have the highest implied team total in the slate at this moment. Then we have Kyle Schwarber and Ian Happ, a couple of uh, Cubs outfielders. But both are pretty solid plays here. Kyle Schwarber, you would think he has more power versus right-handed pitching, but actually Ian Happ actually had a higher ISO to righties last season than Kyle Schwarber, which I thought was pretty interesting. But Schwarber is always in play here versus right-handed right pitching. I feel like I've said that 37 times already, right-handed pitching. But, I mean, it's just a common verbiage to say in MLB talk. But uh, I like Kyle Schwarber here, 300 ISO to righties, 127 WRC+, plus, 550 slugging. And Turnbull, like I mentioned, we want the lefties uh Lefties versus him compared to the righties. Then Ian Happ, pretty similar play here, but he's going to be leading off 4,000. I feel like he's a better cash game option just because he's leading off. And look, Kyle Schwarber always is a pinch hit risk as well if you face a lefty, which Ian Happ is a switch hitter. Now he's worse versus lefties compared to righties, but the numbers are still decently solid for Ian Happ here. And so they are for Kyle Schwarber as well, but sometimes he'll get lifted for a righty. But still, like Ian Happ here versus the righty Spencer Turnbull. He's got a 318 ISO versus them, 381 Woba, 135 WRC plus, and a 591 slugging. So I like Ian Happ leading off for the Cubs here. And again, I'll be pretty interested to see what their team implied team total is going to be on this slate. Then Cole Calhoun, 3800. He took uh, Castellani deep last night, and I think he profiles pretty well here versus Herman Marquez. Now. Not a pitcher I want to like actively stack against, so I don't list too many Diamondbacks, but I like some of these cheap lefties here, and Cole Calhoun certainly qualifies. He's got some decent pop versus right-handed pitching, looking at his numbers. 245 ISA. Now, he's a high strikeout, low batting average guy, but I like the power upside, and I think he could certainly get a cheap home run here from Cole Calhoun. Uh, David Peralta is pretty much of a similar play here. He's just a little bit cheaper, but he's going to be batting cleanup, and if you're looking at his numbers versus righties, not as much power, but overall better contact. 18% strikeout rate, 286 batting average, 208 ISO. Overall, some pretty good numbers for. So Peralta's fine as a lefty versus Herman Marquez, which we do prefer the lefties against. We do prefer the lefties versus him. Then Will Myers, 3400. I think he's. I think he's fine now. Vegas isn't a big fan of San Diego, but I actually think they're viable here, especially the righties. And if you're looking at his splits versus lefties, they are pretty darn good. He had a 17% walk rate last season. Now, he did strike out 37% of the time, which is pretty awful. But a 280 ISO, 130 WRC+, plus, and a 512 slugging. And I think he's okay. I think he's a fine option here. So we can certainly look his way just because he's how good his numbers are versus lefties. And San Diego does hit lefties pretty well. They did last season, and they are this season once again. Then if you want a value outfielder, there was a couple of other guys I could have listed here, but I liked Victor Reyes the most at 2,500. Now he's going to be going up against Tyler Chatwood, who started the season on absolute fire. Then in his last start, which is quite a while ago, he gave up 11 hits and pretty much just got blasted. Now I don't think he's going to be that bad, but I also think he's going to be as good as he was to start the season. So somewhere in the middle, probably leaning towards the bad side, but not terrible, but... Certainly, you can use some lefties here versus uh, Tyler Chat. Well, he's a switch hitter, but if you're looking at Reyes' numbers versus righties last season, had over a 300 batting average, which is encouraging. That's pretty much the only nice thing I can say, but I think he's going to be fine here. I mean, he's only 2,500, so you don't really need too much out of him. But yeah, I think that's going to be pretty much it for the video, guys. So if this was helpful, remember to, remember to leave a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. I really do appreciate it. And I think that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoy your Tuesday, and I'll see you in the next video. And I just want to point this out. I'm recording this at, like, 1 in the morning the night before. So this slate could change. Maybe something happens, some news breaks. But 
I'm going to have this scheduled to upload around 8 o'clock, so hopefully everything stays clean until then. But again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.